this up here. Hi, I'm Melanie. I'm here with Titus. Uh, would you like What's to up? What's hello? Up? maybe introduce yourself? Um, how would you describe your sound for anyone that might be watching that hasn't heard your music yet? Yeah, so uh, thank you for having me. I'm Titus, and um, I make a lot of pop punk, um, punk, uh, alternative, sometimes indie pop. Uh, a lot of a lot of crossover between hip hop, so a lot of trap breaks. Yeah. Um, very influenced by what was once the local scene in New Jersey. Um, a lot of more post hardcore screamo bands like Senses Fail, uh, yeah. to name one. To be more specific, I was I was actually really influenced by their first project from Depths of Dreams. Um, yes. That was one of the first projects that really got me into the genre as a whole. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I had been um, into a few separate things. I mean, I, I was, you know, I had a pretty strict childhood. I, I wasn't really allowed to listen to a lot of music growing up. Uh, single, single parent uh, in the church. A lot mm -hmm. of music was, you know, like Christian or classic music like James Brown or Rita Franklin, these kind of vinyls would be laying around my granddad's house. Um, but then I, you know, I happened upon uh, a lot of pop punk and emo music during that time when I was just hanging out with my friends skating. Yeah. And uh, Senses Fail, that album was, it just really struck me because there was a lot of pain in that album. Yeah. Um, and I, I related to a lot of it, um, just feeling displaced in my own neighborhood and my own school and my own life really so yeah. really really that that spirit kind of still resonates with the music I make today I think even just the ground folds the song like yeah <laughs> it's heartbreaking in itself yeah it's wonderful album yeah I was actually going to ask you along those lines how did growing up in New Jersey help shape you as a musician it well a lot it, it, it does two things for me, um, primarily. One is that this is like, I mean, being primarily the shadow of New York City, um, there's like a lot of culture here, and a lot of different culture. Um, so, you know, you can go down the street and be in a totally different world than you live in here, which I like about New Jersey. And uh, for that reason, it's very diverse. So in my example, um, you know, I live, I grew up in like, what would be considered a nice suburban neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. However, I lived in like the, what was considered not nice uh, <laughs> black area. And so there was a lot of policing, over policing that was done there. And just, you know, to us, it was, it was our community. That's where we hung out and we knew everyone on those streets. And uh, I had two vastly different experiences because of that. Um, so like, you know, I, I would hang out and listen to different music and be around different people. And then when I would go to school, it was a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a constant culture clash every day. And I don't know, just just really affected me because although I felt like my friends, um, a lot of them, like a, a lot of my friends didn't look like me and they weren't treated like me. So yeah. I felt like alone a lot of the time, you know, outside of the people that had that same, those same experiences in my neighborhood, some of whom I'm still friends with today. Um, and two, uh, big, big scene here at that time. I mean, there was, you can go to New York city, you know, we would catch the train or the bus and, yeah. you know, either to skate spots in the city or to shows. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we only had so many venues in Jersey uh, some of which are, are closed now, but um, sorry, it's my AirPod. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we would uh, we would catch a lot of shows in New York and uh, in Brooklyn, and yeah, it's just the proximity made that accessible. Yeah, you mentioned feeling alone. Did that is that kind of how something that made you want to make music to kind of. So initially, um, it's a good question because my relationship to my own music has changed. Yeah. Um, so initially, I listened to music as an escape um, in a way when I didn't realize it was it was providing that for me. A lot of my escape was um, just not being home 
Like, so I would spend a lot of time at my, at this friend's house sleeping over that this week or hanging out, like, shoot, you know, just doing nothing all day at like this abandoned place that we like used to hang out at or this spot by like, you know, this river or whatever. And, um, you know, I, I would listen to songs that emulated how I felt inside. Yeah. And then, uh, initially making music for me was just a way to, uh, it just it was just something I enjoyed. It was a way for me to bring like to manufacture this happiness that I was really searching for. Yeah. And then as I got older, it uh it really became more of a a necessary medicine, more of an yeah. outlet and more of a, a means of therapy when I didn't realize I was using it for that purpose for so long. Yeah. And so I would say things that I was afraid and terrified really to talk to people about on songs, and then once I would hear them back and release them to like strangers basically and and also people who know you and would you know would never know these things about you it's uh yeah there's a bit of uh of that that stress and that that trauma that's uh kind of eased yeah um so you've actually collaborated with some pretty incredible artists um one of which is how i found your music um i heard gorgeous disaster way back yeah and- <laughs> I've never gotten it out of my head. It's still something that <laughs> pops up on my playlist pretty often. Um, nice. Is there anyone that you would really love to collaborate with one day? I, yeah, there, there's a, there's a short list I have yeah. of some, a lot of legacy artists. Um, first and foremost, before I go into that, I got to say uh, that record specifically was really fun to make. Yeah. Um, it starts out with like this, this, uh, you know, this more calm, somber energy. And then it, it's, it's ignited literally by, by the mm-hmm. hook. And, uh, Kellen just couldn't ask for a better, like human being really to, to yeah. do that song with, because he's, you know, I, I enjoy working with artists, but it's 10 times better when they're great people, when no one's watching. Yeah. Um, which is not always the case. And, you know, in this case it was uh, he's just he was really supportive and really excited about the whole thing and for me that was like a fan moment and a bucket list moment because yeah. i i watched kellen and sleeping with sirens at warp tour for like was like two weeks in a row performing every day while i while i did that when i was much younger and that was like a full circle moment for me like okay now I'm, yeah now he, now we're working together so that was yeah. really cool um that goes without saying, you know, there's still a, a lot of bands uh, from that time that I really, really want to collaborate with. Buddy from Census Fail, obviously, is, is yes. at the top of that list. Um, and I'm going to make that happen somewhere or another because, uh, yeah, you know, we share that New Jersey connection as well. Uh, Silverstein, definitely a big influence yes. for me. Of the newer, I'm going to put air quotes here, newer <laughs> uh, artists definitely Kenny Hoopla Mm -hmm. very very cool artist um who I've really grown to like as a writer equally as a you know performer yeah um he's really talented I had a chance to meet him on a few occasions him and uh Nothing Nowhere is cool I know he's uh he's on the east coast as well Mm -hmm. um yeah and Let's see who who else. Let me give you one more. Probably, I mean, this is another legacy, but Tom Delange, Tom Delong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Just because that was like, you know, his voice obviously was a soundtrack to so many people's uh, nostalgia, and mm-hmm. me specifically, a huge influence. So that would be really cool. Yeah, that would those would be amazing to hear those happen. Like, yeah, nothing yeah. nowhere is in my top five easily yeah. like, he's an incredible artist um I do you have any agree. plans to tour in 2023 yes mm-hmm. i do i do um okay. we were blessed to um go on this tour with arrows in action last year which was cool yeah um, a lot of traveling and it was really great uh, to meet like a lot of new people and those guys are great i really enjoyed the time with them as well performing is one of my most it's probably my most favorite thing to do yeah. um, outside of writing and uh, I get goosebumps just like 
thinking about getting back on the road it's it's you know there's a lot that goes into that as well you know yeah uh, i want to make sure that i have more of this project i'm working on complete and this year definitely have to do the east coast so we're looking at yeah um North summer carolina. Time, hopefully north carolina for sure i've been getting that yeah. one for a while <laughs> uh cleveland obviously uh, new york new jersey pennsylvania uh dc is another big one yeah and uh chicago i really want to get there yeah so uh this year we're looking at um may or june okay great I'll, I'll be i'm not sure who won't, who who it's going to be with what the yeah you know, conditions will be but i will definitely make it happen this year yeah so you had to perform at the so what music festival what was that like it was well okay it was hot <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that first because I mean that it was not only was I wearing um I was wearing ski pants and um you know like a ski vest yeah it was just that's just that's just the drip lately um but it was like incredibly hot that day and yeah. I've been to Texas before briefly but never never like that it was like <laughs> it had to be 100 degrees yeah uh, in the shade that day and then the next day and then the next day but it was very cool it was kind of like a uh friends and family thing in a way mm -hmm. i saw a lot of artists who i had known of and known about and um you know acquaintances and just yeah. I, I just i just kept bumping into people and it, the atmosphere was really great so i was really blessed to be on uh you know a part of that festival and that was also my first festival performance um playing any of these songs so yeah super grateful and uh definitely would do it again um yeah hopefully Many next more time to come, hopefully. Better. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um do you have a motto or good advice that you live by yeah uh, both actually um yeah. one thing that's not necessarily like a, a motto but just something that i always say is that things always balance the universe always has a way yeah. of keeping balance. Yeah. So I try to, that's more of a rule that I live by is everything in moderation. So mm -hmm. everything will always have equal parts bad is equal parts good. Every time mm -hmm. I feel super sad and, you know, I'm going through stuff, I remember that there are equal parts where I feel the opposite. And I have to remember in those moments that it is equal. Yeah. It's even though the bad times can feel a lot louder and longer. Mm -hmm. um I like that yeah and the other one is uh oh my god <laughs> <I'll just see laughs> it. um it's tough because i have this whole uh i have this whole this whole song tattooed on my arm that's not actually uh released and it's more of a poem than it is a quote but uh probably would be a lyric from from uh heaven yeah the song heaven uh, um i piece myself back together again just to tear it all apart somebody stop me <laughs> yeah like it's like a, a it's like it's a reminder that you know you're constantly working on yourself and trying to be better and it's very easy to uh to fall back mm -hmm. on those things so okay um so anything other than music that you're passionate about yes skating yeah very much so I used to actually before I would skateboard um sorry after I learned how to skateboard all of my friends in uh in high school just decided that we were gonna rollerblade because yeah. at the time, skateboarding was like having a massive push in mainstream media. And you had like superstar, you had Tony Hawk Pro Skater come out and like all these things that like really pushed skateboarding to like a real, you know, sport level. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just counterculture. So naturally, we just chose the thing that was less popular and, you know, was rollerblading. I'm not even sure if that was a reason or if we had a reason, but um so i started doing that we were then all inline skaters and that is something that i spent a lot of time doing as a kid and 
since most of my music is purely channeling the nostalgia I had during that time, yeah. um, I feel like skating came back to me for the same reason. Um, so I still do that a lot, even though it's tough on the East Coast. You know, the weather is like just you get like four months of rain and snow and freezing <laughs> cold weather and like the indoor skate parks aren't aren't as uh, common anymore. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's changing, though. You know, it's getting yeah. warmer and I'm looking forward to like a nice warm summer where I'm not wearing a retro fubu bubble coat outside because it's just <laughs> brick. Like I just, I need to, you know, I need to wear this and, and skate around. Yeah. Um, so definitely that. Um, I do a lot of gaming from time to time. <laughs> what do you play? I play a lot. I play a lot of PlayStation. Uh, it depends. Call of Duty. Um Sometimes Red Dead Redemption. Uh, we play a lot of. V- I have a VR headset, and so sometimes I'll play like zombie games in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Horizon. Uh, yeah. Sometimes FIFA. I've I've been I've been getting a lot more into soccer, in the mm-hmm. last couple of years. I don't know how that happened. To be honest, I actually think the game got me into soccer more. It's crazy how that that happens. Yeah. Do you watch it as well, or you're just like you yeah, know? yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. I I, yeah. I just would play FIFA mainly because my brother would play. He's like so competitive as a just as a person, but yeah. uh, in gaming specifically, and uh, got me into FIFA. And then I started playing it all the time. And then I started watching soccer games, <laughs> and then yeah, now I'm like a bona fide like European soccer <laughs> fan. <don't> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So when you were growing up, what did you want to be when you grew up? Initially, I wanted to be a photographer. Yeah. Um, crazy. We were just talking. My girlfriend and I were just talking about uh how retro cameras are coming back. Yeah. You see people with point and shoots now, and you know, first it was Polaroids, but now people are getting like uh these you know the the original point and shoot cameras, digital cameras. Yeah. I remember I had this Sony. I had this Sony CyberShot again. Actually, as I talk about this, this probably comes back to skating as well because. We would make DVDs back when DVDs were a thing. Like yeah. we would make little edits for like early YouTube. And my one friend had like this handheld VH. It wasn't a VHS camera, but it was some kind of tape camera. Yeah. And he would film all our sessions, and we'd make like little edits. We'd put music behind it, and we'd watch it just for us. And uh, then I started taking a camera to take pictures when we would mm. skate. And I then started taking pictures of other things like nature and things that were fascinating look at stuff real close and I had a sony cyber shot mm-hmm. silver camera i love that thing to death i literally used that until it broke yeah and, uh, I, th- I i was thinking about buying one on on ebay this week actually you um, should. Just, <laughs> pure nostalgia but yeah so at the time <laughs> i was like oh i'm gonna become a maybe i'll become a photographer you know i took this class in high school where he had like printed out our photos, blew them up. And I was like, wow, I feel like a real yeah, adult. <laughs> with like no, you should. It's an amazing, like, that's what I do on the side is concert photography. Okay. It's, it's oh, an incredible okay. so outlet. Yeah, I, I really, so really, um, I still try to, ch- I, ch- I try to channel that in different ways, I suppose. Yeah. Um, you know, working with directors on videos. Yeah. And you know, shooting my own skate edits and stuff, small things, but I still enjoy it very much. Still an artist, you're still creating. Hell yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Definitely. All right. And my last question for you is, do you have any closing messages for your fans? Um, There's definitely a new project that is being worked on. Um, It's almost, it's almost done. I'm trying to collaborate on this one um, to get some of my hopefully bucket list people on there yeah and um it's already got a name uh, which which i will announce soon okay <laughs> when it's a little more complete and hopefully we'll be doing a tour uh yeah. in the next two months or three months or we'll be announcing one soon for this year um and yeah i love you all and don't be afraid to to talk to me or to somebody uh, if you need to talk as they know, I'm always right. here. Awesome. And hopefully Buddy will see this. <laughs> yeah. He'll say, yeah, Buddy, what's up? That. What's <laughs> up? I'll, I'll, 
I'll drive to you. It's probably yeah. about uh, 20 minutes from wherever. That's kind of how it is over here. <laughs> yeah. All right. You take care. Hopefully I'll see you on All tour. All right. This was great. Yeah. Yeah. Talk Bye. to you later. Thanks. Bye.